So welcome everybody and thank you so much for joining us for our third um, Avada Associates Featured Artist in Conversation. So we're really excited to have had Katie Helen featured as our April and May artist. Um, so to finish off her two months feature, um, we're really pleased that she's joining us with uh, the previous um, OAFA, who is Imogen Rigdon for our In Conversation this morning. Um, so in just a moment, I'm gonna hand over to them for their In Conversation and there'll be some time for some questions at the end. Um, but just a little reminder um, what the OAFA series is. So as lots of you know, we have um, an Avada Associate membership. And one of our new features is that an associate artist um, can be chosen as a featured artist for two months. So perhaps uh, Katie will let you know a little bit later uh, what kinds of things are involved in that. But if you would like to be featured as an Avada Associate Featured Artist, all you need to do is be signed up as an associate artist and have a profile listing on the Avada website. And then the featured artist of the two months um, uses that to choose the next featured artist. So after that, if you are chosen, there is opportunities like um, an Instagram residency on the Avada social media. You have an in-conversation feature like this. Um, and you get to choose the next featured artist who you then have an in-conversation with at the end of their sort of residency. So I'm gonna hand straight over to Katie and Imogen. Thank you so much for joining us today. I'm gonna to pop myself off spotlight so that they can um, have their in-conversation. And if at any point you think of any questions that you'd like to pose to Katie at the end, you can pop them in the chat and we'll come to those um, towards the end or you can ask them by popping your microphone up the end as well. Brilliant, over to you Imogen and Katie. Thank you, Lisa. Hi, um, right, let's just kick off with the first question. Um, so you're an experimental multidisciplinary artist and your work is very varied. Do you have a favorite medium for producing your work? I think that um, <clears throat> the thing that runs through all my work is drawing, some kind of mark making, some kind of way of, um, yeah, making marks in different ways. But yeah, drawing, mm. that's my quick answer. <laughs> it's okay. drawing. <laughs> Have you got a slightly longer answer? Than I don't think I do. I've got some longer other uh, other answers. So let, yeah, let's, let's go on to the next. Yeah, okay, all right, yeah. <laughs> uh, what kind of environment do you find suits your working practice best? Um, is it, do you work best in isolation um, or in collaboration with people or both of those, or would you describe it in any other way or the other environment I, that suit you? Yeah, I think it's, um, I think it's both. At the moment, isolation has been perfect. And of course, during COVID, um, we've all been sort of in isolation and I've really cherished that time. Mm. Um, and, and I do have studios at Wilkett. I haven't spent a lot of time actually the last couple of years because other things have been going on. Um, and I've also been working here. And while I'm at home in isolation, it means I can flip from the different parts of my practice quite easily. And um, that, that is actually, I think that's part of my practice, mm -hmm. being able to sort of go spend, spend three, four hours drawing and then something just triggers me where I need to go into the other room and do some other work um, that's also related to my practice. And, and because it's all here, it, it's, um, it's hard to think what I need for my studio when I go down to the studio. Mm -hmm. But I've also really enjoyed collaboration and I've done a little bit um, with you and it's been fantastic. But we, we've had other things going on, both of us. And I, I can imagine coming back to that and collaborating with other people. I can imagine collaborating um, with someone who doesn't do art as well, maybe a, a mathematician, um, because there's a, a little bit of numbers 
and mathematics very there's a lot, little. There's a lot of very, very little but it's I, I know I wouldn't say it's it's mathematics anyway I, I can imagine that it would be um an interesting collaboration for sure um I haven't found anyone or I've not got anyone in mind but I, I can see collaboration is a is a really interesting um way of of viewing your practice and um and going down parallel avenues to your practice that yes. are that are different but but similar yeah. and, and exciting yeah yeah so I think the fluctuating is um for me I I don't I can't just do one I, can, I don't think I can just do one um mm. and at the moment at the moment um isolation is is where I'm at <laughs> brilliant that's that's uh, yeah that's very good um Recently, because you've been um, showing your work online, uh, you've been showing older work and viewing it from a new perspective. That's really interesting to me. Can you say more about that? Yes. Um, <clears throat> I think when I make work, I don't always know what I'm doing. And a little bit afterwards, I think, oh, maybe I think it's about that. And then when it's when it's a few years, you know, I know I've grown, you know, there's been a bit of growth in me. And so I'm looking at the work in a different way. And if the work has some resonance and, and is actually um, work that I, I think is, is, is good, I feel is good. Um, I, th there's something deeper. I can go a bit deeper into what it's about now than, than, than when I made it. Mm -hmm. um the, the there are layers there's a depth to it um <clears throat> and um yeah I'm I'm trying to think of of what work I think I keep coming back to the one um where I videoed myself walking in charcoal because that was that was part of a was pro uh, project mm -hmm. called journey um but it was incredibly spot. I mean, I had that. I had that in my head. So I was obviously thinking about it because it was a, the project, the next project we had. But it was very spontaneous when I rolled up out that paper and and poured charcoal on and started walking and using these sticks. It, it just all kind of happened. Um, and then it sat around in my studio for about six weeks, and I kept on passing it and just sort of glancing at it and just doing something else. Um, and yeah. And and then and then something happened, but I'm I'm looking at that in another way. I'm thinking about that was a time when my mum was very ill, and um, I didn't realise at the time, but she had a, just a couple more months left, left of life, and um, I was feeling like a trapped animal. And I look and and that you know who 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 walks up and down 136 lengths of their studio. It's mm. kind of not. It's kind of a bit odd. Um, but it took me a while to look back at that and think, gosh, maybe I was a, a bit of a trapped animal. Um, Pacing. In, in, yes, in a cage. Mm -hmm. And and interestingly, those pieces, um, I, I, I cut up the walk um, and they became these sort of scapes, landscapes. Um, and, and, I, and I look at those as sort of maybe a landscape that is... is uh, for me and my future. So um, so maybe I, I'm looking at them now and feeling that they're quite comfortable landscapes now, but at the time um, I, I didn't know, you know, I knew there was some kind of scape, but that I didn't recognize them. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah. 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 Um, when we first met at Avada, it was 2014, um, you'd studied graphic design in the States and focused on mosaics. Um, does this side of your practice continue to inform what you do? I think it's really hard for it not to inform me in some, some ways. Um, if I go back to um, my A-level uh, textiles, I did textiles for A-level. I didn't actually have a lot of choice, not like they do these days. I think it was painting or textiles. Um, but because I really love pattern and symmetry and rotation and reflection and all those kind of, I think they're wonderful. Um, it, that's really related to, to textiles and, and screen printing particularly, which is what, which is what I did. Um, and 
I used, I, I remember for years, I just thought, oh, that's something I did then. But I think because I didn't really know myself and what what my direction was was going in, I when I was on Art Foundation and someone suggested my work, you know, I should be doing graph, maybe graphic design. I thought, oh, okay, you know, like a little puppy dog. I was like, oh, okay. So I I I definitely was blind to mm. where I, you know, what where my real destiny was with my art, I suppose. Yeah. Um, but I, and, and, and that's why I'm not doing graphic design anymore because it wasn't in my passion, it wasn't in my heart. But I do love it and I've, 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 it's definitely there, you know, the, the, the white spaces. The, I mean, in a way, some of the rules with graphic design are really similar to painting. Yeah, it's a really similar kind of thing, mm -hmm. you know, pos positioning sort of um, balance, all that kind of stuff. Um, and mosaics, yeah, it was really interesting that I wrote about my mosaics on the blog because I don't norm, I don't talk about it a lot, um, but I think I wrote it in the blog because I noticed that my work at the moment they look like mosaics, so mm -hmm. that's um, that's interesting. Um, so I, I yes, definitely. I mean, the piece behind me. Yeah, I'm just looking at that, <laughs> and that I yeah, um, I it did. Just yeah, illustrates exactly yeah it illustrates exactly what you've been saying the piece behind you mm, uh, mm. and several of the ones i've seen in your studio at wilcott mm. have been have been um yeah look well, i have to mention it now <laughs> but I, I i guess i used to not uh, um i don't know i um yeah I do, so we I get, don't we, maybe we just uh, yeah think that things sometimes we have tendency or other people have a tendency to think that what you did earlier on in your, um, in your art life uh, or your career was less than, than, than what you're doing now. It's, n it's not necessarily- It's a part. You no. Know, Definitely part a part, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. And my work yeah. wouldn't be like it is now no. without it. No, absolutely. Um, life drawing has been important, an important part of your practice. You did a huge amount of life drawing at Avada and I know it was very, it was strong. Um, so, an important part of your practice is it still so um does this feed into your work as a whole do you think or not at the um, I, yeah i've been thinking about this question um and yeah life drawing is really important um that that way of deep looking mm. um and 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 the, the fact it's not just it's not an object Although I feel objects are alive as well in a certain way, but it's a it's another human. There's a sort of connection that that goes on with with the drawing uh, as you're drawing a, a, um, a human figure, um, and there's also something that goes that get, really excites me that goes on in the brain. There's a part of my brain that only gets activated when I do that, or it feels like that, and it's just it. Um, it's exciting and exhilarating. And Roger does experimental drawing. And um, I think I love the experimental drawing so much because my first experience with life drawing was uh, on Art Foundation. Every Thursday, it was my favorite thing, my favorite day, I loved it. And it was quite experimental. And um, there's, a, there's, an a, there's, a, there's obviously an aspect of unpredictability, risk taking, and if you look at my practice, <laughs> unpredictability and risk taking are completely a part of almost almost all the art I do. So in that way, it is linked, but not directly. Um, on that art foundation, I mean, the, the, the head of department who took the life drawing, he almost got sacked because um, he, 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 he wanted to have a fire in the middle of the studio with the model standing, I mean, poor model, but I, that was so exciting. The smoke, the atmosphere and drawing the figure coming through. I mean, most, most of the room just scattered and went <laughs> out coughing. And I just was like, yeah, this is great. <laughs> so um, yeah, I think that says a lot actually. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so that's it. this question then, um, in contrast to that's quite interesting, you use strict rules, <laughs> chance, <laughs> and audience participation in your performative work, as I've seen in Avada. People have commented that such work takes a lot of courage to do. I think you are a very courageous artist. Do you get into a zone in this work? 
And does this come easily to you or not? Thank you. Question. Really nice question. Um, yeah, the zone thing I, I I can get into quite easily. I think I had a um, I've had a, a lot of experience in my past of being in that in-between state. Um, and it does come easily. Um, I remember the first performance I did, that 11 day one um, called uh, mm -hmm. Looking, um, Looking for the Meme, um, where I, I spent, I, uh, I asked uh, the audience for numbers and I drew a drawing really that they created. Um, I just had a pattern that I kept to. And um, I, when I remembered the pattern, so it was very fluid and I'd be in that cube drawing, I did go into, uh, mm. I call it more sort of a meditative state. Yeah. And it shocked me. I, it was such a surprise. It was, I love that because I wasn't expecting it in the, in the performance that mm. that would be happening. And I relished, it was just beautiful, it was lovely. And, and as you know, um, that, that exhibition was very dim, the dim lighting, and I was behind opaque um, plastic and I had a very dim light bulb. Uh, so I, I felt like I was in my own little cocoon. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, that meditative stillness, when I came, when I took my costume off and, and went into the other other space where I just started to make marks, it was, I just, um, I felt like I was on my own in my own little world. And um, I, I didn't, I didn't, it didn't matter what, what happened. And there's that kind of, I think that's the feeling that it gives me when, when I'm in a zone. It doesn't, you know, nothing matters, mm. but this enjoyment of, of where I am. I remember that studio that you created at that point. It was a very temporary space. Mm. And I just think when I come into your studio at Wilcott, it has the same atmosphere. It's very, um, yeah, it, it, it's, a, it's a place of, of, of deep thinking and um, there are things scattered everywhere, but you, I, I walk around any bit of rubbish I see on the floor because I think it might be <laughs> significant. I mean, it's a really, um, a, a place where you clearly get into um, yes your meditative state and 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 things come from that or or don't but you it's it's a very interesting studio you you don't have a tidy studio which is a really good sign and um, yeah and that studio was so temporary it was so interesting I loved going in there and the building the building up of yeah. Of, of the walls with marks yes. and whatever. Yes. Yeah. 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 I've still got all that stuff or, or the stuff I made. I mm. don't, I don't really rate, I don't really, it's more, it, mm. it was more a part of a process. Yes. You know? When I really realized that process art was, was what was um, yeah. fascinating. And it and, showed and me how you worked at that point and it, it was very interesting. And, and it's interesting what you should say about my studio because I do keep it I don't, I don't, I don't say, oh, I must keep it untidy. It is untidy mm. and has things around and I don't, I unconsciously, there's a sort of an unconsciousness of, of mm. putting things in places. Mm. I don't realize for later. Yeah. Yeah. So there was a whip that I, um, <laughs> that yeah. I made, that I, I made out of some string and a, and a, um, a bit of bamboo that was, that was sitting there for a while until I, kind of connected yeah. what I needed to do with a piece of work yeah, um, yeah. and then suddenly something happened so yeah, I, yeah. I do keep things around in, mm. uh, for, for that uh, I, I guess not for that reason they just yeah. they're there there's, mm. there's a yeah. there's a reason and a non-reason I don't know it's, yeah no it's something else up there <laughs> um, you write a lot in your practice I know and I um, I know you're undertaking a storytelling course at the moment do you see a connection between this and your performance work? This is such an interesting question because I, I, I hadn't really connected the two. I know that sounds crazy, no. but I, um, when I decided to that I needed to tell stories and do storytelling, um, previous to that, it was when I came back from the desert, um, and previously to that. I was not a storyteller and that was what other people did. And I was not a person who would stand up and, and, and tell a story. N that was not me. But when suddenly I, I, I realized I needed to. 
and it was really yeah. imperative that I that I did so. And so it was it was there was sort of opening doors in my head, I think, at that and not saying I'm a kind of this kind of artist. Um, I open open doors saying that that I, these other things could come in. And um, and yet I. Yeah, it's been really interesting because now I'm looking at it in another dimension that it could be. Yeah, it could be brought into my. Um, mm my performance. When you said, because you know me, we know each other so well, other people won't know when you said quite casually, when I went to the desert, can you just- That, uh, that might, be, that might yeah. be another question. That might be in another question. Oh, okay, you, all right. Now? I, people I need to, well, I don't know, people need to know. No, no, I'll, we'll wait for it, but it's a really, um, <laughs> I think people need to know about that. Um, your approach to your practice seems to be courageous, as I often describe it, and you take on massive challenges. Um, as a result, your practice has grown very fast in the last few years, very rapid. Is there any one event or period in this time which stands out for you as the most influential? <laughs> um, I don't think there's one. And I'm going to have to go back just very briefly a bit further than just a couple of years because my mum had a huge stroke mm -hmm. in 2006 and I stopped making mosaics and um, I spent probably about six years just reading and that's when I started journaling. So that's part of my practice and that's where it really started to kick off. And I was I was asking all sorts of questions. What am I doing here? What what you know, what am I meant to be doing? Who am I? All those kind of existential questions that you ask yourself sometimes and um I, it was also i kind of describe it as kind of an emptying too because i wasn't doing any any art um and for six years yeah so after about six years i i started to do some life drawing um and then uh for a couple of years and then i got some uh, some care for mum so i was able to um do mm. the was course with you so the was course was also another. I would I would say that that's another um, big thing that happened um, that completely well it changed everything. Yeah. Um, uh, and then in 2017, my mum died, and that was a huge a huge event, as as mm -hmm. anyone knows. You know, when your mother dies, and it, it was my second parent dying. Um, so that was it was it was massive and. I was floundering and sort of doing all sorts of stuff that just didn't feel quite right. And then, um, but actually during that time, I started using the dice again or, or using the chance and the numbers and the pattern. Um, but yeah, it was, I felt like I was floundering a bit, but I think that's what happens when, a, when, when something so massive like that happens. And then in 2019, um, I, 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 decided that I, I had to go to um, New Mexico where I, I, I went on a vision fast um, and it was 11 days with 11 of us and three guides and four days and four nights were spent in the desert under a tarp with a sleeping bag um, and only water. So there was another emptying, but I, I'd, I'd um, yeah, and I don't know what happened there. I've written about it, but I really have no idea what happened. But since then, that experience has just accelerated whatever was already going on for me. Um, so something did happen there, but I can't, I don't no, know. No, I mean, maybe. No, I mean, I really don't know. No, it'll still. <laughs> and you were alone for those. It's important to know that you were alone. Yeah, I was, I was completely alone, completely um, alone with, with the that. possibility of rattlesnakes and, and yeah. um, scorpions and coyotes around. <laughs> I was worried I was worried about putting up the tarp something really basic like that because yeah. I'm not a camper so um, but um, you know I can say on a very basic level wow you know confidence was a huge thing because mm. I you know I came mm. out of that thinking wow I can do that mm. but yeah something on a very spiritual deep other level for sure happened. Yeah. That'll be a well of experience that maybe will come through in, in future years, maybe in 10 years time, you'll find that goes back to that, to that time, or whatever you're doing then will go back to that time. I don't yeah, know. I think it's unfolding. It, it's unfolding. Yeah. Hope yeah. Maybe yeah. for a while. Yeah. 
don't think you need to go back anytime soon. You've, you've got a, a well of stuff there. Oh, I don't know. It was it was lovely. It was George O'Keefe where she painted. It was it was just the most amazing scenery. Mm. Um, yeah. Thank you for that question. Oh, you're very welcome. <laughs> you're you're exploring a lot of new avenues just now, but they seem to me to be linked in important ways. Um, is this true? And might you need to factor in a period of reflective space at some point, or do you manage to include this as you go along? So three questions, uh, it's crazily three questions. So first of all, exploring a lot of new avenues, are they yeah. in important ways? Yes, they are. Um, I, I'd say that my work is, is very much autobiographical um, and always has been, you know, I, it's, yeah, I think it's very obviously, um, and and I can't help that. It's just, it's just, yeah, what I do, and also the storytelling, uh, the it, the kind of storytelling I'm really interested in is autobiographical storytelling, and all the journal work I do is, it, I mean, it sounds all a bit me, 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 but actually, uh, what I'm interested in is is figuring out what I can serve, you know, who I can, you know, who I can. Mm -hmm give back to um, and, and serve. And I, and I think that will come through my storytelling. Um, and also I do a, sh a shamanic practice and that's a lot about storytelling too. Mm. Um, I did some clown work last night. That's, I'm just so giggly from some clown work last night. So I'm sorry, um, excuse me. Um, and uh, yeah, well, I've lost my drift now. No, no, that's that's they are linked in important ways, clearly. Um, yeah. Do you think you might need to factor in a period of reflective space at some point, or do you do that as you go along, do you think? I, it just happens. It just happens. I never sort of take two weeks and just mm. do nothing. I think it's always there, uh, you know, from the sort of from the two hour I don't know, I guess people call them power naps. I've never really thought about it that way. Some, I, don't, I don't schedule a power nap or anything, but sometimes I just lie back and I just need to shut my eyes for a bit and I feel so re-energized. And I think that something has just kind of linked together or sort of had a little bubble. Yeah. It's a little bubble inside me. Mm. Um, and I, I, I used to, feel really guilty for not doing something for a whole day, just sort of sitting, mm -hmm. you know, and I think that that probably brings me sort of back to, oh, you know, you're lazy, you know, what are you doing? You do nothing, but actually, yeah. wow, it's important. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's really important for mm -hmm. things to just settle. And in fact, you know, quite often you don't know what's happened. And then the next day, You've got this sort of fresh look of some sort, but I don't necessarily know what's happened the previous day, but I don't need to. It's just whatever magic sort of yeah. whatever has yeah. happened has happened. Um, and yeah. Uh, yeah, it, it's interesting during um, during this whole last year, it, it's it has been quite an exciting time for me. And I've talked to a lot of artists and they've said that they've they've kind of relished this, this time um, for their practice. I haven't, I haven't been making art much at all this last year. So I, but I, but I was very busy. I was very busy journaling. I was busy doing some um, storytelling. I'm about to do a three month storytelling course in September. So I am, I'm getting, I guess, feels a bit serious, you know, three months residential course um, uh, but I am serious about that. I'm serious about everything I do, but I always, I, I'm much lighter with myself than I used to be. Mm -hmm. And I have a lot more self-belief and I feel, um, I feel more authentically me. Um, and I'm over pleasing other people. You know, I think that mm -hmm. when my mum died, you know, that was quite a big thing in my life. And it's taken me a while to just, just be so in my little zone. Um, yeah. 
You're happy in your skin, we say. Totally, yeah. Yeah, 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 which is brilliant to see. And, um, and it will produce a lot of work when it's ready. So, uh, I mean, it, it's producing it now, I think. Your drawings that you're doing at the moment are extremely exciting and quite, do they, quite different from one another. It's very odd. I can stand in front of them and see a real difference between them and, and they draw you in. So um, I'm very pleased with what I'm seeing at the moment. <laughs> Imogen, um, can I say something about that just briefly? Yeah, yeah it, yes, it, do. It's kind of weird because I'm throwing a dice a, a lot. Yeah. And it's a really interesting thing to do because you've got that kind of thing. Well, what influence am I having on it? Mm. And I and I kind of think, is that why you're looking at really different drawings? Mm. Mm. Um, I I got stuck in something in my head and I was going back and forth with these two numbers. And I was like, oh no, I'm really stuck. And it was, I kept on throwing the, these two numbers that were making the drawing going back and forth. And then I, I resolved that in my head and I started start to go in another way and more fluid again. So it's really, it's, um, I don't know, it's been, mm -hmm. been a little bit odd. <laughs> oh, I lo I'm loving them, absolutely loving them. Re really, really interesting. Um, okay, this is the, the, the whopper. This is the last question I'm going to ask you. And I think it, I tried answering it myself and absolutely hit a brick wall. And it, I'm really determined to do it. But if you were to imagine drawing the path of your practice from the beginning to now and into the near future, what shape might it take? <laughs> um, such an interesting, such a brilliant question. Um, it's quite hard to describe, so I've done a picture. Good, no, that's what I sort of predicted you would do. So it's spiral with me in the middle birth and then going round. But, but while I'm going round, I'm, I'm, I'm looping back into my past and then coming back around. So it looks like, it looks like that. Oh, wow, yes, yes. But that's probably because I think it looks quite pretty. I don't know. <laughs> oh. It's it's attractive, but <laughs> but, but I mean, I, it's a, it, it is such a hard it's such a hard question because it it's hard enough, isn't it, to present your practice? As I know, we both have at Avada, we've both presented our practice, um, and thinking about how it how the various stages link together is terrifically difficult, I think. But to actually draw it. Well, that's my first, my first Ooh. one. I, it, may, it may change tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> um, but that's what it is. That's how I feel it is today. Um, and those looping back bits are, are me connecting with mosaics, for example. Yes. Me realizing, you know, I, I think sometimes I, I do D, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm at D or some kind of answer. Or what, and then it takes me a while to do A, B and C. And that's just a kind of a way I work. Well, look, Katie, obviously, I love the way you work. And I love the work you do. And it's constantly, I think it's it's constantly fascinating and uh, and and deep. Um, not simple to do, not simple to see either. It's it, it's very layered. And it, it, as I said, it draws you right in. So thank you so much for um, talking to us about it and uh, that yeah I'm handing over to Lisa because I think she might have possibly a few things to say or questions to ask or fantastic thank you so much Katie and Imogen what, uh, what a rich discussion thank you for letting us listen in so we've got a little bit of time now to open the virtual floor um, to your questions so if anyone has a particular question for Katie you can either pop it in the chat if you prefer and, and we can um, pose it to her uh, or you can pop your pop your microphone on and and ask her um, as well so um, while you have a little think about those um, I've got a quick one for for you Katie um, so obviously we can see all your incredible work that you've shared with us um, on your blog on the Avada website um, which we can uh, link to a bit later on um, and you've been featured on the Avada Associate featured artist Instagram, but is there anywhere else that we can that we can find your work, a website or the social media? Um, oh, it's so you? embarrassing, so embarrassing. Um, no, not really, I'm sorry. <laughs> That's 
so yeah is there any any um places that you that you like to share your work either online or, or kind of uh, physically when when we're able to, to um well that. actually there's, there's a show on right now there are two uh, both both Imogen and I are included in two shows at the moment um Imogen and I are both at Wilkert Studios near Finstock and we are included in a show at Wilcott Studios and the private view is tonight and it's on Saturday and Sunday and we are also included in a Wilkert Studios exhibition in Woodstock at Dali and the Bear, which starts, is it next weekend? It starts, it's the private view on the 27th, Thursday. Yeah, th next Thursday is the private view and it's on for a month. And the private view is between five and nine and all welcome. Um, yeah. Yes, it's on until I think the 18th of June. Okay, three weeks. I'll just check that, but I think that's right. A lovely gallery. Oh, and, gorgeous. Um, that is going to be there and a couple of my slightly older work. Um, but the work, which is very related, but very different. Um, my drawings that I've been um, showing on, on um, what's it called? Instagram. Uh, <laughs> they, <laughs> they are, at, they are at, at the Wilkert Studios at the moment. Yeah my studio and then we've got a little shared shared spot outside with a little um representation of each of our works so, because there are there are uh, there are about 12 or 14 from the studios exhibiting and then at the same time um there's another artist who is is, is showcasing his work there at the same time so yeah brilliant thank you that's so exciting that there's um a physical space we can go and experience your work in really soon um, brilliant. So that is a question from Steve in the chat. You could say more about the role of maths in your work. For example, is it applied by a rule or are there any random elements? Combination of both. <laughs> um, the well, I, actually, I, I, I don't know. I'm I don't know. He, he's he's very mathematical, more mathematical than I am. So I'm I might get this a little bit wrong. But the way I the, the things I really love about um, maths are symmetry, um, rotation, reflection. I just I and and um, yeah. So for the drawings that I've been making, I have a particular pattern, and that is my rule. So I make the pattern up with the numbers, um, and then the random the random bit is the throne of the dice, um, and so I'm combining them together. I don't know whether that answers his question. Really, oh, that that leads really nicely onto another another question in the chat. Actually, um, is could you talk more about the dice throwing and and what's that about and what's that process? Like, is there a particular rule for each number or? Yes, a, bit a particular that. rule for each number. And that all started when I did the um, performance in, when was it? Um, oh, yeah, when was it? 2016, um, where I asked the audience for numbers between uh, naught and nine, and I had um, a, a, a direction. So it was a continual line drawing. Um, but now I do continual shape drawings. <laughs> so it's line drawings and shape drawings. Um, and I have, a, I have a direction. So that was quite simple. I had a particular direction and it was to do with um, uh, the um, cardinal points and, and that kind of thing. Um, but now I have, a, 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 yeah, a, a particular pattern and I adhere to that pattern. So whenever I throw the dice, I know, I know where the my next shape to colour in or my line is going to go. Um, yeah, it's that sounds quite mm. difficult to explain, but no, it's it's really simple. Mm. <laughs> um, is uh, what I really enjoy. Um, back to the math question is there's something about that simplicity, sort of the the simple equation or the sort of simple thing that describes something more complex. Not, and not that I'm not that I'm saying my work's like that, but but it does become quite um, a complex thing, although it's incredibly simple how it starts. So it's sort of almost like this building up of of. I mean, it could go on and on. It's a bit like infinity. There's sort of that side of mm. it, it, 
which I haven't really thought about. I'm kind of thinking aloud here, but it's, um, yeah, it's interesting things to ponder actually. Thank you for the question. Brilliant, thank you, Katie. Um, so another question is, um, as you both know, so this is a question for both you, um, Katie and Imogen, as you both know, volunteers are a huge part of Vardas community. And we have two wonderful Brooks interns listening in today. Do you have any advice or tips for people at the start of their creative practice? Okay. Oh gosh, <laughs> open-minded, um, willing to try anything. Play. Play, plays on my manifesto. It's one of my top, um, yeah. You can <laughs> do anything, it. I think. You can do anything you like. And, and don't, um, I think something, I think this takes a, I, well, for me, I'm not gonna say for anyone else, but for me, it's taken a long time to just not be pleasing other people, you know? And, and I think for a, for a while I was sort of 80% into my, you know, oh yeah, this is great. And then there was sort of that little percentage of, you know, is this, is this gonna look right? Is this gonna, you know, am I doing the right? You just go with where your heart is. Cause you're, you know, you, you know, um, deep in, deep inside you, what it is that you love, that's, that you're passionate about and find that I'd say. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Brilliant. Any other advice from you, um, Imogen? No, I would go along with what Katie's saying completely. Yeah. I would say that as if you sell work, um, the danger is that you then make work to sell. And so selling is a very complicated thing. Um, and people expect a certain thing from you and you quickly become known for certain things. So selling is I think not selling is very liberating. And then the judgment that people make, so do you sell? It's a bit like writing, have you published anything? You just think it's completely missing the point. Um, so I would go along with what Katie's saying. Absolutely, I would say that play for as long as possible. And I think certain, the artists that I respect have a certain kind of way of detecting whether you've um, sold down the river or not, whether you've, um, whether you've done something to please people or whether you've done something because you believe in it. I think certain people have got a nose for it. And, um, and I always think of them when I'm trying to produce something. Um, I produce it because it needs to be produced, I think, my, in my opinion. And if somebody really doesn't like it, it's still something that I believe in and therefore it's part of my, part of my work. Tough, you know, it's tough it's tough it's a tough one and I also think that um the the energy that you put into the work it, it will show it will show it will smile back or it will um or it will just feel Absolutely. a bit warped or whatever you know whatever the <laughs> feeling the work is gonna and it, it, that's what that's what the artist has put in and I think that um mm. that's important yeah Brilliant, great advice, thank you. And we have another from Joe saying, um, Katie, do you see um, the work as a meditation? Mm. <laughs> um, yeah, a lot of my work, actually, gosh, that's a really good question. I've never really thought about that, but yes. I mean, the, the drawings that I'm doing at the moment are, you know, there's an aspect of, of meditation in them and they are, calmer than my previous work in general. So maybe there's sort of a, a calm meditative thing going on with me. I'm certainly a lot lighter than I used to be on myself. I used to be, I used to really be quite serious and or, or quite hard on myself. And now there's a lightness and actually you can see that lightness in my work, which is just makes me laugh. <laughs> Cause it's just, but then that's, that's, that's what simplicity is, I suppose. You know, one thing happens, and and it and it ha ends up happening in your work as well. So. Do you think that might be something to do with the way that um, voices that have affected you in the past are fading a little? And uh, oh, all of that. There's, yeah, there's, there's a lot going on. Like, yeah, yeah. Uh, and just so you've so got much more kinder to myself. Yeah. Yeah, and you've got more people actually really appreciating what you're doing, and therefore you can listen to them. Their voices are louder. Yeah, it's taken me a long time to find um, find the the friends I need to have around too. You know, that's yeah, yeah. and that's quite exciting um, mm. because I, you know, it's just I've I've been a slow learner in lots of things in life. I think um, a lot of us have. 
<laughs> great, lots of really great questions coming up actually. Um, so Steve is also asking, what about learning how to do things? Do you learn, for example, how to paint in oil and then do oil painting? Or do you work out what you want to do and decide what would be the best way to do it and then learn how? If you don't that's so know. interesting that's so interesting i generally i i i um no i don't like learning things <laughs> i like doing things the wrong way um i when i i i did i did a, a painting after my mum died i just didn't know what to do and um jan very kindly sort of ran me up and said there's one more place on the painting course how about it and i said oh, okay i'll i'll try some painting and for a for a I don't know, a couple of months, I was really struggling. And then I realized, oh, I don't need to use a paintbrush. So I was moving paint around with my body and it just felt so much better. So um, I, I don't, yeah, the quick answer is I'm, I, I, I don't, I do learn things, of course I do, but I do like, um, I like using tools that are for something else. That's very much in my practice um, and yeah, I like subverting <laughs> the the knowledge I get, I guess. Um, yeah. Brilliant. So when you're um, kind of in the ideas generation stage of of your kind of creative process, do you have, um, does a particular material come to mind and then you go towards that or does that kind of come along with, with the process of making? Yeah, it doesn't, I don't, I don't choose a material and I don't, and I, and I don't approach my my um, I don't approach a new practice of thinking I'm going to use this subject or I'm going to do this kind of thing. Um, I think I think part of it is I go into a slight meditative thing and I just sort of do what feels just right. And in and it you know, 10, 20 times of that may just be stuck over there. But quite often I'll keep that and I know and I might come back to it and and start it start start working on it again um i it's i'm terrible i don't throw anything away um but uh yeah did that answer it i'm not sure yeah. i think the i'm terrible is uh, i'm i don't throw anything away you could knock off the i'm terrible i, think <laughs> yeah. I meant that in a giggly way yeah, that's um, a good idea to I'm, I'm looking around thinking where can i put all this you know is that um <laughs> I, I do I do eventually throw some of it away um but the doodles are, I mean yeah just yeah mm. doodles are important do you keep a sketchbook no no I didn't think um, you did. no. I, I have lots of books uh, writing uh, bits of paper and bits so I've got stacks of that kind of thing so that yeah. they're separate and out of the book mm -hmm. But my journal is like a sketchbook. Okay. Um, mm. And it does have a little bit of uh, more diagrams rather than mm. drawing. Mm. And, mm. But I do love to draw. Yeah. Yeah. Brilliant. Any other last questions? Either feel free to pop your microphone on or pop it in the chat for us before we round off our discussion. Fantastic. Well, can, thank can you. Can I say one more thing? Yeah, thank of course. Lisa, thank you so much, Lisa and Grace, for um, for in, you know instigating it and getting it all sorted. And thank you so much for Avada. Um, it's just a fantastic thing to be a part of. And um, thank you so much, Imogen, for for asking me and inviting me to do it. And and I also have to thank myself for saying yes too, because yeah, absolutely. <laughs> thank you all of you. Fantastic, really good. And thank you, audience, for coming, for coming to listen. Absolutely, I'm just going to pop up so I can um, say a big thank you to everyone. So yeah, like like Katie said, thank you for joining us this morning, um, and a huge thank you for Katie and Imogen for letting us listen in to your such a rich discussion. Um, and some really great questions and, and really lovely um, insight into your kind of thought processes and your, and your practice, Katie. It's been really um, lovely to hear. So um, if you want to 
um, go back and either revisit or, or see with fresh eyes um, Katie's blog post. Um, with you know this discussion in mind, you can head over to avada.org.uk forward slash associate blog. Um, and you can read a bit more about her practice there and see some more images. Um, and of course, you can also head over to Avada's Instagram and the um, Avada Associate Feature Artist Instagram as well, where, where Katie's had her Instagram residency and has been posting some really brilliant images, giving us some, a great insight into, the, into your practice. So I do really encourage you to go and go and look at those. Um, and then, of course, also uh, keep your keep your eyes peeled for um, the announcement of our next artist um, for June and July, um, who I believe is here with us. Callie's already. here, and and Fantastic. yes, that's the other thing I wanted to say. Callie, Callie is our next featured artist, and I'm really excited to to hand over to you. Yeah, excellent. We're really looking forward to it. Um, so yeah, just a big thank you. And um, if you want to watch this uh, discussion back as well, it's going to be available on Katie's blog post, um, uh, that associate blog uh, that you can find on Avada's website. Um, but for now, we'll enjoy the last few days of, of your um, feature, Katie. And thank you so much again. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, thank you Lisa. Thank you, everyone. Bye.